Boris Johnson has been discharged from hospital but will not return to work immediately. NHS England has confirmed that the total number of confirmed coronavirus-related deaths in hospitals in England is 9,594. Refresh and scroll down for updates as they happened throughout the day. Boris Johnson has thanked NHS staff copyright. JP Media sign up to our daily newsletter The i newsletter cut through the noise last updated, Sunday 12th of April, 2020, 17 colon 01 NHS England has confirmed that a further 823 people, who tested positive for the coronavirus, COVID-19, have died, bringing the total number of confirmed reported deaths in hospitals in England to 8,937 work is underway to build an NHS Nightingale Northeast Hospital at an industrial estate in Washington more than 20 members of NHS staff have believed to have died from the illness show new updates 5 p.m. We owe it to them to get them what they need Mr. Hancock said that there was always more to be done regarding PP but there were now record amounts in the system. He said that the government was working very closely with the pharmaceutical supply chains and hospital pharmacies to make sure medicines were available. He said that he wanted to be transparent about operational challenges and pay tribute to health and medical staff. On streets, front doors and balconies up and down the country we've seen the esteem with which our whole nation holds our carers, those who make the NHS and social care what it is, he said. We owe it to them to get them what they need. Mr. Hancock said that 121,000 gowns have been delivered around the country and more would be coming, adding that the average time to deal with PPE queries have gone down to two and a half days in the past week. 4 colon 25 p.m. More information on the app Matt Hancock said, if you become unwell with the symptoms of coronavirus you can securely tell this new NHS app and the app will then send an alert anonymously to other app users that you've been in significant contact with over the past few days, even before you have symptoms so that they know and can act accordingly. All data will be handled according to the highest ethical and security standards and would only be used for NHS care and research and we won't hold it any longer than it's needed. He said the app is currently being tested and they are working with the world's leading tech companies and experts in clinical safety and digital ethics so that we can get this right. He added, the more people who get involved then the better informed our response to coronavirus will be and the better we can protect the NHS. 4.15 p.m., Health Secretary announces new NHS Trace and Contact app the new app which is currently being tested, will be available to help people trace and contact those who they have been near if they have been diagnosed with COVID-19 or starting to show symptoms. He says the government are working with the world's leading technology experts to bring this app to the public. 4.10 p.m., Mr. Hancock says NHS has not been overwhelmed. The health secretary says that those who are abiding the UK's lockdown measures over the Easter weekend are making a difference. At the start of this crisis, people said the NHS would be overwhelmed. We have seen that elsewhere but not here, said Mr Hancock. He says this is because the public following social distancing rules. 4.07 p.m., there are more spare critical care beds now than when the coronavirus first arrived in the UK. The health secretary says the latest figures shows there are 2,295 spare critical care beds. There are more spare critical care beds now compared to when the coronavirus first reached UK shores. There are also a record number of 9,775 ventilators in the NHS. 4 p.m., Health Secretary Matt Hancock is leading today's press conference. Matt Hancock has praised the NHS as Boris Johnson has been discharged from hospital. He says he hopes people have seen the Prime Minister's video to the nation where he thanks both the NHS and the public. Our aim is to protect life and to protect the NHS, the health secretary. He says the fact that more than 10,000 people have lost their lives to this invisible killer shows how serious it is. 3.54 p.m., Boris Johnson names and thanks the NHS staff who cared for him. Conservative Party leader Mr. Johnson mentioned by name the nurses who had watched over him all night to ensure he survived his coronavirus symptoms. I want to pay my own thanks to the utterly brilliant doctors, leaders in their fields, men and women but several of them for some reason called Nick, 
who took some crucial decisions a few days ago for which I will be grateful for the rest of my life, he added. I want to thank the many nurses, men and women, whose care has been so astonishing. I am going to forget some names, so forgive me, but I want to thank Poling and Shannon and Emily and Angel and Connie and Becky and Rachel and Nikki and Dan. And I hope they won't mind if I mention in particular two nurses who stood by my bedside for 48 hours when things could have gone either way. They are Jenny from New Zealand, in Vicargal on the South Island to be exact, and Luis from Portugal, near Porto. And the reason in the end my body did start to get enough oxygen was because for every second of the night they were watching and they were thinking and they were caring and making the interventions I needed. 3.43 p.m., 84,279 people have tested positive for coronavirus 3.36 p.m., a fight we never picked against an enemy we still don't entirely understand. Mr. Johnson continued, because although we mourn every day those who are taken from us in such numbers, and though the struggle is by no means over, we are now making progress in this incredible national battle against coronavirus. A fight we never picked against an enemy we still don't entirely understand. We are making progress in this national battle because the British public formed a human shield around this country's greatest national asset, our National Health Service. We understood and we decided that if together we could keep our NHS safe, if we could stop our NHS from being overwhelmed, then we could not be beaten, and this country would rise together and overcome this challenge, as we have overcome so many challenges in the past. 3.22 p.m., Boris Johnson's message to the nation after hospital discharge in a video statement released on social media, Boris Johnson said there was no question the NHS had saved his life after he contracted coronavirus. The Prime Minister said, I have today left hospital, after a week in which the NHS has saved my life, no question. It's hard to find the words to express my debt, but before I come to that, I want to thank everyone in the entire UK for the effort and the sacrifice you have made and are making. When the sun is out and the kids are at home, when the whole natural world seems at its loveliest and the outdoors is so inviting, I can only imagine how tough it has been to follow the rules on social distancing. I thank you because so many millions and millions of people across this country have been doing the right thing, millions going through the hardship of self-isolation, faithfully, patiently with thought and care for others, as well as for themselves. I want you to know that this Easter Sunday I do believe that your efforts are worth it, and are daily proving their worth. 2.46 p.m., Northeast death toll reaches 490 inches total, 490 people who had tested positive for coronavirus have died in the Northeast. 44 additional deaths were announced on Sunday April 12. In England, a further 657 people, who tested positive for COVID-19 have died, bringing the total number of confirmed reported deaths in hospitals in England to 9,594. According to the figures from NHS England released on Sunday April 12, the breakdown of the number of deaths at North East hospitals is as follows. South Tyneside and Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust, 143 deaths of people who tested positive for coronavirus in total. 13 more deaths were announced in April 12th figures. Northumbria Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust, 72 people who tested positive for coronavirus have died in total. 7 more deaths were recorded in April 12th figures. North Tees and Hartlepool NHS Foundation Trust, in total 29 people who tested positive for coronavirus have died at the Trust, 9 deaths were recorded in April 12th figures. South Tees NHS Foundation Trust, in total 83 people who tested positive for coronavirus have died at the Trust. 4 deaths at the Trust were confirmed on April 12th. County Durham and Darlington NHS Foundation Trust, in total 78 people who tested positive for coronavirus have died at the Trust, 6 more deaths were confirmed on April 12. Gateshead Health NHS Foundation Trust, a total of 42 coronavirus-related deaths have been confirmed at the Trust.
No deaths were announced on April 12.1 colon 52 p.m. Boris Johnson discharged from hospital Downing Street said Boris Johnson would have a break from work while he recovers following the decision to discharge him from hospital. A number 10 spokesman said, the PM has been discharged from hospital to continue his recovery, at Chequers. On the advice of his medical team, the PM will not be immediately returning to work. He wishes to thank everybody at St. Thomas for the brilliant care he has received. All of his thoughts are with those affected by this illness. 1.15 p.m., NHS is not going to run out of drugs to treat patients, senior medics stress there will be enough drugs to treat critically ill patients in intensive care despite fears of drug shortages, senior medics have said. But leaders in intensive care medicine and anaesthetics also warned that people should obey social distancing rules in order to reduce the burden on NHS resources. Their comments come amid reports key medicines at some intensive care units were in short supply. Intensive care consultant Dr. Ron Daniels told the BBC that quality of care for all intensive care patients, not just coronavirus sufferers, will likely be lower as a result. But Dr. Alison Pittard, Dean of the Faculty of Intensive Care Medicine, said that the NHS was not going to run out of medicines to treat patients and that care will not be compromised. 12 colon 30 p.m., vaccine the only way out the director of the health research charity The Wellcome Trust has said there could be further outbreaks of coronavirus without a vaccine. It is my view that treatment and vaccines are our only true exit strategy from this, he told the BBC. We are determined that we don't go through this ever again and I think the chances of second and third waves of this epidemic are probably inevitable. And therefore having the right treatments to save lives and also having a vaccine in the future is going to be absolutely critical to prevent those second and third waves. On the prospect of a vaccine, he added, the vaccine I think will be available during the autumn of this year but that will not be at the scale required to vaccinate maybe billions of people around the world. 12.10 a.m., UK could end up with worst coronavirus death rate in Europe Sir Jeremy Farrar, director of the health research charity The Wellcome Trust, said it was possible the UK could end up with the worst coronavirus death rate in Europe. Numbers in the UK have continued to go up, Sir Jeremy told the BBC's Andrew Marr show. And yes, the UK is likely to be certainly one of the worst, if not the worst affected country in Europe. He said continuing testing in the community would buy you time to deal with the crisis, giving an additional six to eight weeks to ensure health systems were up to capacity. Undoubtedly there are lessons to learn from that, Sir Jeremy said. Page 1 out of 2 Let's Block Ads Why?